Hi, I'm Hazel Cox. I'm a professor of computational quantum chemistry at the University of Sussex. So what is computational chemistry? Well, computational chemistry, also called molecular modeling, is a set of techniques for investigating chemistry problems on a computer. It is capable of accurately predicting the structure, reactivity and properties of molecules and materials. It can also predict the properties of unknown molecules or very reactive molecules that can't be observed experimentally. To give just a few examples, computational chemistry is key to designing safe and effective drugs. Here on the left hand side, members of the Sussex Drug Discovery Centre are using 3D representations of a novel molecule to test its binding to a protein found in the body. It can also be used to help develop new fuels and design smart new materials by providing deeper insight into the properties and formation of new molecules and materials. For example, experimental work by colleagues at Sussex include this molecule in the centre, recently synthesised by Dr Barney Greenland to investigate the environmentally friendly synthesis of molecules and materials that could be used in the next generation of solar panels. And on the right here, these beautiful titanium dioxide nanotubes can split water in the presence of sunlight, as shown by Dr. Chao Chen and Dr. John Turner, making hydrogen, which can be considered one of the most environmentally friendly fuels. Computational chemistry can also guide experiment to efficient synthesis, reducing resources such as time and energy. So computational chemistry can be used to model all forms of matter, from materials to individual molecules and the interactions in atoms. But the computational method we choose depends on what we want to study and how quickly and accurately we want the results. For example, if we're interested in estimating the products of a chemical reaction or examining how various candidate drugs fit inside the active site of biomolecules, we can use classical mechanics, treating the molecules as balls held together by springs. However, if we are interested in making new molecules and materials, we need to understand how the electrons, the glue that holds molecules together, are behaving, and for this we need quantum mechanics. As quantum mechanics explains the nature and behaviour of matter at the atomic and subatomic level, so we need it to understand how the electrons in the atom are behaving when we form a molecule. Now quantum chemistry is simply the application of quantum mechanics to chemical systems. It can be used to solve many, many different real world problems and here are just a few from the recent literature. From improving the efficiency of quantum dot light emitting devices used for example in televisions, to studying prebiotic molecule formation in interstellar clouds, to studying catalysis which is extremely important in chemistry as it helps speed up chemical reactions and or lowers the energy needed to make the reaction start. And quantum chemistry is becoming increasingly used in computer-aided drug design to understand how drugs interact with the molecules in our body at a subatomic level. So the computational chemist has a whole toolbox of methods they can use. We can use classical mechanics to study millions of atoms as it is computationally cheap in terms of both CPU time and computer memory. But if we want to understand bond making and bond breaking, we need to use quantum chemistry. Now we can simplify the equations of quantum chemistry by fitting to experimental data to give us semi-empirical methods, where we can do calculations of tens of thousands of atoms in a reasonable time. But if we want to perform calculations from first principles without fitting to experimental data, these are called ab initio methods from the Latin from the beginning, we need to decide how accurate we need the results, as more accurate results require less approximations and this comes at a greater computational cost in terms of computational power and computer memory. Now if we are happy with reasonably accurate, we can use a method from our toolbox which is good enough to explain the structures and general chemical trends, but we may need a more computationally expensive method within this group if we want to explain chemical energetics. Our goal is normal chem normally chemical accuracy, considered to be about one kilocalorie per mole, which is approximately four kilojoules per mole. And if we want to attain very accurate data, for example, high resolution spectroscopic data, spectroscopy is the interaction of light with matter, 
then this comes at a high computational cost and, cur and is currently limited to just tens of atoms. Now, although we have this wonderful toolbox at our disposal, a very active area of research, including in our research group, is to develop faster, cheaper, very high accuracy methods to solve the equations of quantum chemistry. Thank you for watching this video.